let me ask you something. Do you remember back when Ed, Ed, and Eddie was airing? And Double D had a book of reverse psychology. And Double D looked at Ed and said, Ed, don't eat that dirt. What does Ed do when he's told not to eat the dirt? <laughs> he ends up eating the dirt. And then, of course, Eddie's like, oh, that's so stupid. Why would he eat the dirt after you told him not to? Well, because that's the beauty of reverse psychology. I vividly remember this scene in my head. It's still funny to me that, to this day. And I think one of the reasons why it stood out to me is because even when I was a kid, it kind of made me realize just how true reverse psychology works. So then I tried doing it on some of my other friends at the time, and I would tell them like, hey, don't go to the swings because the teacher told us not to. And then they would go to the swings anyways, because they're like, oh, bet, you know, I'll go and go on the swings anyways. What's the teacher going to do about it, right? So, you know, and I found it so fascinating just to kind of like, you know, BS my friends and people that I knew and kids on the playground after watching that episode. But something that I never really thought about until like recently was the fact that it's so easy to trick other people into doing the opposite of something that you tell them to do. But yet when it comes to yourself, when it comes to myself, it's so hard to do the same thing. Have you ever thought about that where it's kind of hard to like tell yourself not to do something and then it tempts you to do it more? It's kind of like tickling, like you can't tickle yourself. It's physically impossible to tickle yourself. But yet when others try tickling you, it, you they only need like a tap and you're ticklish. It's truly mind boggling how psychology works like that. And I wanna go a little bit more into detail about why this kind of self psychology of telling yourself not to do something like your brain telling you I don't want to do this and then you go and do it even though your brain's telling you not to do it and then when you do do it your brain's like oh this feels great I'm sorry I told you to be not do it so that's like what I want to talk to you about today is like getting comfortable with the discomfort getting comfortable with being uncomfortable the fact of the matter is that the more that you get comfortable with being uncomfortable, the more you're able to deal with uncomfortable situations that get thrown at you when you don't want expect them to or want them to. So just like with the reverse psychology of other people telling you not to do something and then you go and do it, it's kind of also tempting to tell yourself, oh, I'm going to go on a run today, but then you don't. Or, oh, I'm going to not play video games today, but then you do. You know, it's tricking your mind into doing the opposite of what you tell yourself to do is something that's much more involved than just telling yourself, I'm not going to do that. Because then you're going to relapse and go back to it anyways at some point. So you got to find a good balance between indulging yourself and rewarding yourself. So what exactly does a sense of accomplishment do in your brain? Whenever you're telling yourself, I don't want to do this, but then you go out and do it anyways, doesn't it always feel great? The sense of accomplishment in your brain for doing something that you told yourself that you couldn't do, but then you went out and did it anyways. If you've never experienced that before, that's incredible. And that's the same kind of accomplishment that you can feel if you go out and do something that you don't feel comfortable doing right now. Like for me, it's video recording. For you, it could also be video recording. Maybe it's going to the gym, just taking a step in the gym. Or maybe it's going on a walk every day, just going out and walking every single day. You know, doing something that starts a good habit. Also think about the fact that constantly being comfortable kills your drive to seek discomfort. Because if you're already settled and you're already fine, then what motivation do you have to get better? You don't have any motivation. Maybe sometimes you'll see somebody with a, something better than you, but oh, that's fine, they, you know, it's whatever. I'm comfortable here. You know, I'm fine with my five to nine part-time job. I'm fine. 
you know, I'm coping, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> but when you're comfortable, and then something comes your way that's bringing discomfort, you suddenly get laid off from your job, your internet goes out, your car, you get into a minor fender bender, something uncomfortable happens and then you don't have the mental capacity to be able to deal with that uncomfortable situation because you haven't prepared your mind to be ready to handle a hard situation. So anytime a hard situation comes, it's difficult for you to get past it because you haven't challenged your brain in the past to be comfortable with this uncomfortable situation. So how can we start to make this discomfort that we don't want? How can we start making it into a reward? How can we start feeling empowered by doing something that we don't feel like doing? Well, it all starts with just like a small, simple task. Honestly, all big things start small. As we say, Rome wasn't built in a day. If you want to go to the gym, then just go to the gym. You don't have to run a treadmill. You don't have to pick up a weight. You don't have to check in. Just go through the doors. Just look around. Ask a front desk receptionist about maybe getting a membership or something, but you don't have to start working out today. You've walked through the doors. Good enough. Check that off your box. You went outside today also to go to the gym. Check that off your box. You went outside. It doesn't have to be for two hours that you're outside. Just go outside. You've taken a step outside your door. Check that off your box. Practice meditation. You don't have to be a Buddhist monk and meditate for 36 years. Just practice for two minutes. Check that off your list. There's all kinds of small things that you can start doing to set in motion the healthier, better habits for the future. So then let's take all this grand scheme of an idea and forward it in a month. So for example, in one month time, if you went to the gym every single day, where would you be? If for two days out of the week, for the next four weeks, so for eight days this month, you cooked a whole meal using vegetables and meat rather than ordering DoorDash, where do you think your health would be? If you cut out caffeine in your mornings, where do you think you would be in a month? Asking yourself and envisioning these changes in just one month is so necessary to actually going forward with completing these goals that you set yourself. But it's important not to be unrealistic. For example, you're not expecting to go out and find a job that pays a million dollars per hour. That's unrealistic, but you can send in four job applications this week for jobs that are paying $16 or more an hour. It's all about just taking the small little baby steps, just like in the movie Shrek. Have you ever watched the original Shrek? When Donkey and Shrek are approaching the castle and there's a rickety bridge over the boiling lake of lava. And Donkey doesn't want to cross it because he's like, no, 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 this ain't safe. But Shrek's just saying, go on and do it. We'll do it one little baby step at a time. And Shrek's literally shaking the bridge and scaring the shit out of Donkey and forcing Donkey to walk across the bridge and everything. But then when it all is said and done, you cross the bridge. So treat the same way with yourself as Shrek treated Donkey. Be harsh with yourself, but be encouraging and reward yourself after you're done. That'll do, donkey. <laughs> I'm not calling you a donkey, bro. Don't worry. But I'm, I'm just trying to relate, like, give, make this more relatable because it really is an issue that a lot of us are facing where we're constantly stuck in the same spot and we don't know what we can do to fix it. Well, I'm telling you that to start fixing things, to start your reverse psychology all over again, to make it so that you eat the dirt when you're told not to. That all starts with just convincing yourself that even if you can't do something, you're still gonna go out there and try to do it anyways. If you enjoyed my message, hit the subscribe button, like the video, or dislike it if you don't like it, and then comment below what you think of my content. Look forward to seeing you again. Have a great one.